Back home now, the government's decision to allow hundreds of foreign workers to be employed at a mine in Western Australia's Pilbara region has dominated political discussion in Canberra today. 1,700 foreigners, foreigners were to be granted visas to work at Gina Reinhart's Roy Hill Iron Ore Project under the Commonwealth First Enterprise Migration Agreement. For more on this, I'm joined by political editor Lyndall Curtis. Lyndall, we'll get to the issue of foreign workers in a moment, but first, the Labor and Coalition Party Room meetings have been held today. Any clue to what was said in there? Well, yes, so both party room meetings effectively discussed the next election. Tony Abbott warned his colleagues to have no illusions about how hard the next election will be, and this is a quote. He said, Gillard won't lie down and die. Where there's life, there's fight. In the caucus meeting, the Prime Minister essentially put her team on a campaign footing, saying the next 500 days they needed to show courage and conviction and that she, she would be working for the 2013 campaign, and she told the caucus that Labor could win that campaign. She says the last caucus meeting of the session will be uh, having a debate about the plan ahead, both the plan on the economic and the social front. Caucus will get a briefing on Ken Henry's white paper on Australia and uh, Australia in the Asian century, and there'll be a broad debate about the plan for the next 12 months ahead, including campaigning over the winter recess. In fact, that will start a little before the winter recess begins on June 15th. MPs are being encouraged to uh, to get out to schools to talk to uh, to talk to parents, no doubt, about the school kids bonus. So there are, there are plans afoot. Now, uh, on the issue of foreign workers, caucus endorsed a, endorsed a motion brought about by the Enterprise Migration Agreement uh, on Friday. What are the details? Well, caucus has endorsed a motion that will give a uh, subcommittee of the caucus economics committee uh, a little more oversight. It was a motion put forward by one of the Labor senators, Doug Cameron. It was amended. There were a couple of minor amendments, but essentially it passed intact. There were 17 speakers on it, including the Treasurer, the Immigration Minister and the Special Minister of State, Gary Gray. Uh, the subcommittee will be called the Spreading the Benefits of the Resources Boom subcommittee. It'll look at a range of things, including the idea idea of a jobs board, including having greater industry participation so that, uh, so that local companies get the benefits of the mining boom. Uh, it will look at the question of enterprise migration agreements, fly-in, fly-out workers, maximising employment opportunities, particularly for the long-term unemployed, mature-age workers, the young and disabled workers. And, uh, and uh, it, it won't uh, have any impact on the agreement uh, with, uh, with Gina Reinhardt's company on the Roy Hill project, but it has the potential to feed into discussion about future enterprise migration agreements. To further discuss the issue, we've been joined by the National Construction Secretary of the CFMEU, Dave Noonan. Dave Noonan, welcome to News24. Good afternoon, Lyndall. Are you happy with what the caucus has decided? Well, uh, I think that it's uh, good that the government is uh, continuing the um, language that the Prime Minister used on Saturday which is ensuring that the benefits of the resources boom are distributed uh, widely in Australia, uh, that job opportunities are created uh, for Australians uh, on these projects and that we don't see a situation uh, where a few uh, large mining companies, a few billionaires and multinationals are able to uh, forever change the face of Australia's labour market and migration policy in their own interests. I think that those things are positive. Is it true, though, that in the uh, guidelines for enterprise migration agreements, they, they clearly specify that, and I'm reading from it now, the first priority for resources projects must be the employment of Australian workers and those applying for the enterprise migration agreements have to show that not only research reports and data that provide an evidence base for skills shortages, but also evidence that recruitment campaigns have tried to be conducted. So aren't there protections already built into the process for Australian jobs? Well, we uh, strongly believe that there were insufficient protections uh, in the announcement that was made on Friday. The details of the actual uh, agreement are not public. Uh, I believe that they've been uh, uh, kept secret, so uh, we're not sure exactly uh, what is in the final document. But the guidelines that have been applied, uh, in our view, don't uh, require the contractor or the applicant to do anything other than uh, show that they've gone to some labour market analysis. To the best of our knowledge, um, so far uh, the Reinhardt companies and the proponents of the EMA for Roy Hill uh, haven't been out advertising and looking for expressions of interest locally and uh, we think that there needs to be uh, a hell of a lot better than just a consultant's report. 
But but don't the don't the guidelines for applying for enterprise migrations have the sorts of protections, whether they've been applied in this case, but have the sorts of protections you want already built in? No, we think they need to be uh, a lot better than that. We think there needs to be a very firm commitment uh, that Australian uh, workers get the first crack at these projects. Um, the Prime Minister uh, has uh, come out uh, and said that on Saturday. And uh, from what we uh, understand of the uh, government's announcements uh, today, uh, that seems to be uh, firming up. Of course, uh, unions and I think the community generally will want to look at the detail of this. Uh, it would be very interesting to see what is actually in the EMA. I don't think that's been made public yet, and I think it should be. And uh, I think that uh, the fact there is now a community debate around this important topic uh, is, uh, is welcome. Was your union consulted about the Roy Hill Project EMA? Yes, we made submissions, detailed submissions. In fact, the unions uh, uh, in the construction and resources space jointly made uh, very detailed submissions around uh, the Roy Hill EMA. Is, isn't it the case that the, the same guidelines I read from before say that unions must be consulted, that, that stakeholders must include union, the union or union that best represents employees in occupations proposed under the EMA? So you're actually, uh, you actually know about this process ahead of the announcement? Oh, certainly we were aware of the process ahead of the announcement. We put a lot of work into it along with our, our uh, colleagues and the other uh, construction and resources unions. Um, but certainly, uh, based on what uh, we heard on Friday, uh, there was a lot of concern uh, that there were insufficient protections to ensure that Australian workers uh, would get the first go at these jobs. Uh, we are here talking about a situation uh, where the 1,700-odd classifications um, are non-trades classifications, and that, that's, that's a first. Um, so we're talking about classifications like uh, riggers, scaffolders, plant operators and crane drivers. Now, um, any uh, workers from uh, the countries who've been uh, mentioned as the most likely sources, which is China, the Philippines and Indonesia, um, are going to have to be trained up and certified in those classifications because none of those countries actually have certification uh, for work like scaffolding. You say uh, the, the details of the agreement haven't been made public. Is it possible that the, the protections that already exist in the guidelines are actually part of the agreement? It's just you don't know about them yet? Well, I, I think that the agreement should be made public. I don't think that uh, there ought to be a situation where uh, agreements which affect uh, the labour market, which affect... Uh, very strongly Australia's um, immigration and labour market uh, future uh, are kept secret between government uh, departments and, uh, and the large mining companies. I think that in the interests of, uh, of uh, transparency, uh, all of these agreements ought to be publicly available. And in fact, uh, transparency would do a lot uh, to assist in an informed uh, debate on the uh, issues and so I think an informed debate and some security for Australian workers is essential to a proper discussion uh, about Australia having a um, an effective and uh, fair skilled migration program, is, something is which it, my union supports. Is it fair to say though that because you don't know the details of agreement of the agreement, you don't know whether the protections that exist in the guidelines are actually part of the agreement? Um, well, we, we don't know all the final detail of the agreement and I've certainly written to uh, uh, Chris Bowen uh, uh, prior to the, uh, uh, the uh, announcement of the agreement uh, stating uh, the view that the agreement should be made public when it's announced. Uh, we still don't know if that's going to happen uh, and I would think it would be a very good thing if it did. The other important part of this, Lyndall, is that uh, there are a lot of concerns about the effective monitoring of existing 457 uh, workers in the... Uh, uh, and employers who have 457 workers in the industry. Uh, the Sydney Morning Herald today carries a story about the fact that there have been um, concerns, complaints and a range of uh, uh, very serious matters raised in relation to another large resources project in the Pilbara. Our information is that there is underpayment of workers on 457s at that project. Aren't, aren't there processes um, though by which that information can be brought to the government and can be dealt with? And uh, we have brought it to the government's attention and to the Immigration Department's attention uh, for over a year now. Uh, but the monitoring and the investigation of those issues has been completely ineffective up until now. Don't. We understand the government's going to take uh, some steps to have a proper look at that now and to direct the departments involved uh, to um, have a proper discussion about it. 
uh, and a proper investigation and, and that'd be welcome. Uh, Dave Nonan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Lyndall.